So, moving on, um, and a statement of the uh, lead and obvious that I've borrowed from somebody else. You can't win it if you're not in it. Um, the easiest way to not uh, have any uh, sales from territories outside the UK is quite clearly to not direct your website anywhere other than the UK. So um, that is uh, that's where we start. Um, but if you are a retailer, UK retailer, contemplating uh, transacting sales in other countries, and you're worried from a legal point of view, you're worried about this legal bogeyman jumping out on you and scuppering your plans, then if you take nothing else away from our talk, let us tell you that there is no such person. Um, unless your products are uh, crap or inherently <coughs> unlawful in the country, you are going to be able to trade anywhere that you want to. As a lawyer, I don't like to ever play down the importance of uh, lawyers, but um, you know how important are legal issues when you're looking to uh, globalise? Uh, clearly, it's, they're important, but it's only one of the factors that you need to take into account, and I've listed just a few there of the other issues, and I would say that a number of those are far more important than the legal issues uh, that you're going to have to cover off. Um, tax and duty, obviously issues of VAT, how you structure yourself uh, when you're transacting abroad, um, and how you deal with the, that depends on how you deal with the income. Um, fulfillment, obviously, how you're going to get the products to your customers. Differences in customer taste. Does a dress that you sell uh, over here, does it, does it sell? Is it likely to sell in the States or is it likely to sell in South America? Is it likely to sell in Russia? Currency fluctuations, we've uh, heard about language uh, differences and indeed we've also heard about payment methods. Lastly, I just want to quickly go through some sort of tips and, and learnings from our experiences. Um, the first one is, is the most obvious and the most important. So are the goods that you're selling, are the products you're selling legal in the countries you wish to target? So have you dealt with product liability issues, labelling requirements for that jurisdiction? Think about limiting your sales to those jurisdictions you're comfortable with, um, where you've done that due diligence. Um, I've, I've seen transactional websites where effectively they just accept orders from any, anybody anywhere in the world without having done any due diligence around some of the compliance measures that are required. And they may be quite high risk products, you know, electrical products, products where there are real sort of product safety issues, particular requirements around um, electricals, and they've done nothing in terms of looking at, at the compliance issues they may face in those other jurisdictions. Looking at the terms and conditions, the thing nobody ever reads. Um, still important to specify if you're a UK retailer that English law applies um, because it's only the mandatory consumer laws within Europe that will trump the English law requirements. All other provisions will still apply, so you still want an English law and jurisdiction clause. You do want to be clear and transparent that the customer is responsible for customs import duties. There will be import duties in various territories, so you need a provision around that in your terms and conditions. And then if you think about that issue around the distant selling different cooling off periods across Europe. You know, a classic example of European legislation which has not been implemented consistently. Everyone's gone for different periods. If you're going to have one set of terms and conditions, and if actually your returns policy that you would operate, you know, you're comfortable with, say, 14-day, 21-day um, returns policy, then you know, make sure you're covering all of the requirements in, in the key uh, area, you know, key countries you're, you're wanting to do it. Because in that way, you're going to meet the obligations across the board. Don't just go for the minimum requirement in Europe because you will fall foul in certain countries. We talked about translations earlier, and obviously, from a legal point of view, you want to make sure that your customers, if they want to, could read the terms and conditions. So think about getting a legal translation of your terms and conditions into local language. But be careful to ensure that you're using somebody who's a legal expert because often when things get translated they lose their particular legal meaning. 
so think quite carefully about that when you're arranging a translation. And as we said, consider obtaining local legal advice because in certain jurisdictions there will be specific changes you might need to make to your terms and conditions. Um, for example, in California they've got some very strict requirements about what needs to go into your privacy policy, so I think quite carefully about what changes you might need to make to those documentation um, and get legal advice around that. But also, this is the last point, just to think more widely about what other issues from a legal point of view may apply. It's not just about the contract and the product. If you're thinking of carrying out direct marketing activities in that particular jurisdiction, you may need to think about data protection issues, so complying with the direct marketing rules within that particular country. Now, within Europe, we've got a common data protection directive um, so the rules are, are broadly similar, although again there are some differences in terms of implementation. But also things like accessibility. So does your website, in terms of its um, compliance with the accessibility rules in the UK, meet also the requirements in other jurisdictions? Again, you know, as a starting point, you should be looking at the international standards around accessibility, so the World Wide Web Consortium guidelines about how you should be making your site accessible to disabled and other users, that would be a good starting point, but again there are particular rules in, in certain jurisdictions around them. That I think was all we had. Um, I would really just repeat Gavin's message, is that often as lawyers um, we can be seen as a barrier in, in these types of examples where we're wanting to expand and, and um, move into new markets, and, and our approach is very much not being a barrier, but thinking about it from a risk-based approach. Where are the territories where it's lower risk, where there's therefore less cost from a legal point of view in looking at compliance? Where are the territories where it's higher risk, where you need to really consider getting some local legal advice?